it has been a really long time since my last video and I'm sorry about that. Um, this project just ended up taking a lot longer than expected with life commitments and all those kinds of things but it is not completely done but done enough now for me to be able to show you. So if you have been following this channel you will know that well over a year ago now um, I discovered that my motor wasn't working anymore and after some investigation it turned out that it was the controller that was the problem. I have a video explaining exactly what was wrong, I'll link that up in the corner um, to save explaining it all over again. Um, but basically the controller couldn't be fixed, um, or not easily anyway, it was potted so not easy to replace any components um, and so economically it made the most sense to replace it. It took quite a while just to even find a replacement. Um, at the time China was still in lockdown so there was a shortage of a lot of components and things uh, so some of the controllers were out of stock um, and there were some made locally in the UK but they were extremely expensive and they didn't really come with much of a warranty so it was a big risk to spend that much money. Eventually I did manage to find one, I got it delivered to my parents house, um, my dad had the motor there and he set it up in his workshop and managed to get it spinning which was very exciting because we weren't 100% sure if it was going to work. Um, so originally we were thinking he would help me install it but um, he ended up not having a lot of time so luckily Nick has quite a lot of experience with electric motors and he agreed to help me install it. So after some planning we decided to connect everything together with Anderson connectors. Um, we figured it would make sense because then you can kind of easily disconnect things if you need to. So the first step of the project was a lot of crimping. connector to latch properly it needs to have two lugs in it even if one isn't used. Ah. There we go. So that's our three phases and we can screw those to a piece of wood. Okay. Um, now we and then when they go together that's how they click together like that. With a reasonably positive engagement. Table this shot, you want to make sure that you get your crimp oriented the way you want it because otherwise, you probably won't be able to twist it very successfully. Right, these connectors they have a plus and a minus. Yeah. So long as you put the plus and the plus and the minus and the minus when you put them together, you see they actually are the same connector reversed. Okay. So, plus then goes into the plus. The cunning piece of design. So minus into the minus hole, plus into the plus hole. Gosh, they only give you enough wire, don't they? <laughs> yeah, I mean, they could have given a few centimeters more. Right, and now for the individual phases. we needed to reinstall the motor in the, in the engine bay. You might remember if you've seen the original video of the motor installation that as a temporary measure we used quite a flimsy bit of plywood to mount the motor onto. Nick really thinks that that should be replaced before the boat goes out again 
Um, I agree. Um, however, we haven't done it yet. <laughs> so <laughs> just bear in mind when you see us mounting the motor to this very flimsy bit of plywood, it is it is going to be changed before the boat goes out. Oh no, don't get a hernia. Next cup. Oh my god. Are you alright there? Do you want a hand? No, there's no space for hands. <laughs> Do you want a foot? The next step was a switch for the motor. Um, so with the previous setup we had a bit of a complicated arrangement um, we had a key switch in the cockpit and then when that was turned there was kind of a custom circuit board that kind of, kind of communicated with the controller um, the problem with that is if it fails especially at sea it's not easy to fix it I felt like it would be best to have a simpler arrangement this time round so what we ended up going for was a battery switch which we mounted at the side of the companionway steps um, it has, it'll have three positions so off and then the next one will be a pre-charge which prevents too much current from going to the controller all at once and potentially damaging it I hope I've explained that right and then and the final one is just the ordinary on position natural habitat Apparently. surrounded by tools <laughs> connecting all of that up it was time to program the controller and get it spinning we first tested it without any load and then we connected up the belt and got it to spin the prop <gasps> look at it go <laughs> oh, awesome that that was only 30% the way it was going. Finally we needed to install a throttle. Um, with the old setup um, there was a potentiometer in the cockpit that basically acted as a throttle but it wasn't an ideal solution um, because it was so small it was easy to turn it too much and then you the motor would go from nothing to full-on <laughs> when you didn't necessarily want it to do that. Um, so what I really wanted was a more kind of traditional style of throttle. After doing Quite a lot of research, I could only really find one that was available within the UK. It's a 3D printed throttle, which is interesting. I still had a hole in the cockpit from where the original throttle for the diesel engine was. Um, it just had like a bit of plywood bolted over the top of it, so um, we decided to reuse that hole. Um, it wasn't quite the right shape, so it had to be um, made a little bit bigger. The, the old um, throttle for the diesel engine had a backing plate, which was rectangular, and the new throttle didn't come with anything like that so Nick decided to go all out and 3D print one so I have a 3D printed backing plate for my 3D printed throttle. <laughs> Thank you. 
spin faster if you wanted more power. But... I think that's good. <laughs> um, my M6 screw holes mainly because I have loads of A4 stainless steel M6 counter sunk fasteners. Slotted heads always look better on a boat as well, for whatever reason. Well, mainly silver slightly to round out than an Allen key. Uh, central position is neutral with stop, so I've put stop there. And then even though it's uh, basically a lin linear potentiometer, so it's sort of you know, it's not notching in into any positions. I just put marks there because I thought maybe you'd like to say, well, I'm one ahead, you know, two or three, uh, and then the same in reverse. Just gives you an idea of, you know, what you might have used last time. Goes to the limits. Quite simple, really. And then on the back, there's just a slot for butyl tape to go into. Oh, it's beautiful. And the same around there, which I'll do first. Uh, Aren't you clever? Finally, when all of that was done, we just needed to take it for a test run. Um, so we recruited our neighbour James to help out because um, this boat doesn't like to go backwards <laughs> and it's a little bit nerve wracking. So um, yeah, it's quite reassuring to have someone else on board. It went absolutely fine. Um, Nick had restricted the RPMs on the motor because he wasn't sure how fast it should spin. It turned out it was restricted a bit too much, so we were going a little bit slow. Um, but he has fixed that now. So there's just a few final jobs to do, replacing that bit of plywood. Um, we haven't actually installed the pre-charge resistor yet. The batteries ideally need to be fixed down a bit better. Um, but yeah, when that's done, uh, we will be good to go. So for the next season the boat will be up and running. So a huge thank you to Nick. Normally I would try and DIY it but this was just way beyond my capabilities and it honestly wouldn't have been safe for me to even attempt it. Um, I could potentially blow up the controller or myself. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you Nick, you're the best. I couldn't have done it without you and um, thank you Dad for investigating the original problems and um, testing the controller when it first arrived. I cannot take any credit for this project other than for buying the parts <laughs> and handing Nick tools. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.